you buy the Stewart with wine on the dime, and one of my favorite areas for wine is uh, Piedmont, or Piemonte, as some people say. It's in northwestern Italy, and it is really like some great subregions for things like Borello, Barbaresco, which are representations of the Ambiolo grape, which is a super dark grape, super concentrated, and I love it. And I found a Barolo, and typically Barolos go for about eh, entry level, like high 20s into mid 30s at most places around here. I was at Trader Joe's and I found one for $13. Let's see if it's any good. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, before we begin today's review, if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, like it, share it with your friends, and uh, do all the other things that people do when interacting with YouTube videos. So today I'm going to be reviewing the 2015 Rosa del Olmo. It is 13.5% alcohol by volume, and like I said, I paid $13 for it at Trader Joe's. Um, this screw top, traditional cork, wouldn't expect one out of a Barolo anyway, regardless of the price. Let's take a look at it. Ooh, I have a little bit of age. That's exactly what I was hoping for at the 2015. Mm. So, off to a good start so far. Let me move that because people don't care about that. They want to see the wine. Uh, from a color standpoint, you're a light garnet, no artifacts, no cloudiness. It's on the nose. Oh, yes. Yes, 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 that dark goodness. So I'm getting some, some black cherry, a little bit of blackberry. There's this nice kind of earthiness to it. Uh, there's like a little bit of a leather, a little bit of a clove, cinnamon type thing going on. Um, but very earthy, very earthy wine. It's sort of like this, almost kind of like a half dry mud type of thing going on with it. There's also a kind of hint of what smells like a, like a, mm, not, it's, it's more like a, coffee ground type note like there's a, a little bit of a coffee note to this a little bit of leather um but like a dry leather like if um if you go to this this if you go to like uh well I don't, they have these here in texas because we're like that but if you go to a leather shop and like if you, places that do saddle covers and hats chaps things like that um, and, you, and you go to a place that not it's not stained leather, it's just like kind of fresh, dry leather, and you don't smell the back of it. You smell the part that's kind of smooth, and you that's what it, it's kind of like. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's just, it, it's got a lot of these dark fruit notes with some good earthiness and uh, some barrel. And I mean, overall, I'm, I'm pretty happy about what I'm smelling. It reminds me of a Barolo. And I will say, though, it's not as intense as like a $40 Barolo. So that probably has like a medium intensity on the nose. The last Barolo I had it was about $39, and it was, I would say it was probably, if it wasn't medium plus, it was pronounced in terms of, of the nose. It was like, you could smell it from out here. This one, I have to get my nose on the glass. It's a medium intensity. But I don't have to work too hard to get any flavors once it's there. So yeah, anyway, enough talk about the nose. Let's get to the taste. Medium plus acid, it's a sour, sour note to it. Very sour and it's bitter. So they're, they're, they're medium plus tannins, they're medium plus acid. The tannins are kind of scratchy. The fruit is just like a sour black fruit. But the thing that I'm getting, that I'm not getting on the nose, that I'm getting on the palate, a, there's like a noticeable amount of like a sour raspberry. Really strong earthy nose, a lot of soil, that leather, and then the, the the cinnamon and clove, they're definitely not sweet notes. These are like, so I make a lot of Indian food too. Um, and one of the things you, that you can do when you're you're making your spices and you're warming your spices to release the seasoning is go too far with the heat and you can overcook the spices. And what happens is they kind of burn and turn bitter. That's what that reminds me of. It's like a sort of like a burned cinnamon stick and a burned uh, bit of clove. So it's, it's a little bit weird right there, but all of the, the stuff I smelled on the nose, minus the raspberry, which I didn't get, uh, is, is here. So, I mean, there's nothing hiding from me. Which is, I mean, and that coffee note really shows up on the mid-palate. And going, as it tails off into the finish, it, it kind of goes away. It's still there, but it's not as intense. Okay, with all that being said, uh, well, let's go ahead and get to the blick. So, in terms of balance, half a point. And the thing that's getting me here 
is actually the tannins. Uh, with with this having some age on it, already presenting, and the fact that the tannins are still so big and rough, I have concern that it will last too, too much longer. And with it being such a light bodied wine and the tannins being so heavy, I, I would hope that the tannins had softened some by now, especially with the other tertiary development that's gone on in here, and, and I'm not getting it. So I'll give you half a point for balance. Uh, length, medium finish, half a point. Intensity, I'm gonna give you medium. I mean, you're more, much more intense on the palate. You're probably medium plus intensity on the palate, but the nose is medium, and unless both are at least medium plus, I wouldn't even entertain a full point there. And complexity, I will give you full three points. I'm getting primary to secondary tertiary, even though that some of that stuff is a little bit bitter on the palate. Uh, I don't know if that's just because of this wine, or maybe I need to do a palate cleanser and, and try it again. Uh, or maybe, maybe this wine is just not a solo drinker and it needs to be paired with some meat. Uh, it does have good acid, it has good tannins. So something like a, man, some like fatty steak, <laughs> like a ribeye would go really well with this New York strip, chuck. Yeah, there's ooh, there's a lot of good things I could go with it. Anyway, uh, oh, I smoked pork. Okay, moving on. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of things I could go with it. So it may not be a solo drinker, but I mean, it still has all the elements that I'm looking for. So in terms of score, I'm gonna give you a good. I, I, I like this wine, but it does not have the same type of character that you're gonna find in a, like a 30-ish dollar bottle moving on up. Um, one of the best bottles of Barolo I ever had. Uh, it was $59 retail. It was brought in for a tasting and it blew my shoes off my feet when I was sitting there and those tasted, it's like shoes just ricocheting off walls. Uh, this is nowhere close to that. But if you want an entry into Barolo, it could kind of help shepherd you there, but it still is really not too, too characteristic of what you're gonna find with some of the stuff that you find for like thirty dollars at a store. So while while it's a good attempt, it's it's definitely not a solo drinker. I would pair it with something else. It's not bad. It's just when I think of like bro, no, this isn't it. When I think of eh, this is thirteen bucks and it would probably pair pretty well with some steak and potatoes. I mean, this might work. Anyway, this has been Stuart with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's video, please like, subscribe, and comment. Have you had the Rosa del Olmo 2015 Barolo from Trader Joe's for $13? I'd be interested to know if you have. Leave a comment below, and I'll see you all again soon with another episode from Wine on the Dime.